We all know that Colorado fans are super high on Deion Sanders, the hiring of Coach Prime, but how important is that hiring in the landscape of college football? I'm going to talk about just how important he is on today's episode of Locked on Buffs. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? This is Locked on Bus. I am your host, Kevin Borba. And on today's episode, we got a great one. Um, we're going to be talking about how important of a hiring Deion Sanders was Coach Prime um, for Colorado in the landscape of college football. Where does he rank among other coaches? We're going to talk about how much pressure everyone is putting on the Buffs this season. And I'm going to rank it on a scale of 1 to 10. And then we're going to talk some recruiting. The Buffs have another big recruiting weekend coming up. But before we do, this episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Um, go to birddogs.com slash locked on. And when you enter promo code locked on college, they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Okay, let's dive right in. Also, I want to thank you guys for making locked on bus your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. Let's dive right in. How important is, I, as you can see right here, off to my right, probably your left, how important of a hire was Deion Sanders? Okay, um, I think a lot of people are infatuated with coach prime i think a lot of people are obsessed with what he's done for colorado but it's time to put into words put in comparison where he ranks among all the coaches 24 7 sports did just that and coach prime came in as the number four most important hire behind garrett riley at clemson the offensive coordinator uh luke fickle at wisconsin hugh freeze at auburn and then obviously coach prime at number four um, realistically, I think he should be number one. And this isn't me trying to be a homer. You guys tell me quite frequently that I'm actually too negative. So let's dial that back. I'm not trying to be negative, you know, um, but I think he should be number one. Uh, when you think about all of the attention he's brought, all of the money he's generated, which just off the spring game alone, he's generated 300,000 plus. Um, that was just in ticket sales, merch sales, all that. So 300,000 plus just in the spring game alone. So imagine how much attention he's going to bring when Colorado sells out practically every game this year. Um, he's brought in exposure. He's brought in good players, number one transfer portal class. And what often gets overlooked was coach prime is hired about five minutes before early or before signing day, not five minutes, but around a few days, maybe a week or so before brought in a top 25 class like that. Like it was just easy. I don't even know if he had a full staff at the time. That's that's huge. Um, let, let's read what they said about him. Colorado made a huge splash with the hiring of Sanders, who brought maximum exposure to HVCU ranks at Jackson State and has completely transformed the Buffalo's brand, like I said, in short order in the Pac-12. Colorado has signed an unprecedented amount of transfers. Um, they've convinced several elite prospects to get things started out west for the 2023 cycle. Sanders has also made Colorado an upper-tier destination for players, or at least program, or at least a program that's now worth a second look. Both of Sanders coordinator hires included in the list are most impactful. So Sanders staff gets an A grade here. Yeah, I, th I still think number four is underselling it though, because Wisconsin, when they like, for example, they hired Luke Fickle, solid coach. Um, this past year, Cincinnati wasn't his best year. Have we seen the best of Luke Fickle yet? I don't know. Um, he took Cincinnati to the playoff, and then once he lost that core group. I don't know how good they were. I'm just saying. Um, they didn't win the American this past season, but Wisconsin, when they hired fired Paul Chris, it was it was pretty shocking. I was like, why did they need to do that? But for most people, I feel like that's what the saying was or the, the vibe was. Garrett Riley at Clemson, I get why it's number one um, because he was probably the main reason that TCU um, made it to the playoff this past season. But now in Clemson, he has a chance to really develop – the former five-star quarterback, Cade Klubnik, who replaced DJ Uyungle. Um, I think it's in terms of like getting Clemson back to the top. I think Garrett Riley will probably have a major case, but you're telling me that an offensive coordinator hiring is more important than a coach who was hired by a program that was literally one in 11 um, in the dumps of college football. I think by most people's standard or account, Colorado was like a dead man walking in terms of relevancy. They, they hadn't been relevant for years. And now all of a sudden coach prime comes in. Colorado has the six most championship bets. Um, top recruits are interested in the program just this past week. And they signed, they got three commits. Um, so I think 
Colorado's hire, Coach Prime's hiring is going a little understated here. Not to mention, he should get he'll get credit for hiring Charles Kelly and Sean Lewis, who, mind you, were both featured on this ranking as well. Charles Kelly is ranked number ten um, on this list, so tenth most hire, important hire in college football. They talked about how good of a recruiter he is. Obviously, we saw him help Colorado get Cormani McLean. He's helped countless five stars go to Alabama. He recruited Will Anderson and other guys like that. And so Charles Kelly, Nick Saban guy, he's going to come over, keep a very strict defense. I think he's going to he's going to help with the culture build. Um, I think he's a very hard nosed, just wants to coach football type of guy. And I think he's going to, in a, in a day and age where, like Coach Prime talked about yesterday, kids are worried about other things that aren't football. I think Charles Kelly is going to keep everyone dialed in. And then Sean Lewis, which I don't know if this is too low, um, too high, or I mean. Definitely not too high. Way too low. I don't know where I'd put him, but he came in all the way at number 20. So you had 4, 10, and 20 on this ranking. Um, they talk about how he went head-to-head with Kirby Smart this past season at Kent State um, for about three quarters. Now he gets even more talent with Colorado's roster. Um, they play flat, They play fast, and they said, depending on how good Shadur Sanders is, um, we'll be talking about Sean Lewis. We'll, we'll determine whether we're not – whether or not we're talking about Sean Lewis, excuse me. Um, realistically, Coach Prime, I think, one, his recruiting prowess. I think that's got to get him up at number one because a lot of these transfers, I'm sure Sean Lewis's offense plays a role, and I'm sure Charles Kelly, like, I'm sure he's helping out, but a lot of these guys, are they want to play for Coach Prime. Like, that's the – there's no way to beat around the bush here. They want to play for Coach Prime. So by him hiring such an experienced staff with multiple head coaches, guys that have head coaching experience, multiple guys that are recruiting experts – I think that deserves more than four. I just that's just my my take on it. Where do you think Coach Prime should be? You guys tell me in the rankings. Uh, he's generated money. He's brought in top talents. He's brought in a great staff, and overall, he could help Colorado reach a bowl game in year one. So, uh, I think I think we're undervaluing Coach Prime's hiring a little bit, um, but it is what it is. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, before we move on. This episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs, they make you look good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, give you a truly sculpted look. They'll highlight your your leg workouts. Bird Dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton. And Bird Dogs fix this issue by having by inventing cloud nick fabric that looks like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. They also use an anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. I personally wore my bird dogs to play some softball. I've worn them to go to dinner. You know, you can wear them to do anything, really. Go to birddogs.com slash lockedoncollege and enter promo code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for a free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. The birddogs.com slash college for a free Yeti-style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Okay, back to it. We just talked about how important of a hiring coach prime and was. And honestly, when you bring in two of the best coordinators in college football, I think you should be number one. I just feel like based off of facts, that's, that's, that's what I would say. Um, let's talk about how much pressure is on Colorado. Um, I think much of this pressure is put on by the fans um, and the media. Um, I, I don't want to say it's like meet fans more than media, but I think with all of the expectations that coach prime has generated, there's going to be some, unrealistic expectations from certain fans. Um, I know a lot of you guys are being realistic. You guys have told me, Um, but then there's some people that seem to be like, it's not bad that you're all in. I want you guys to be all in on Colorado, but I don't want you guys to get mad if Colorado happens to struggle at certain times during the year. So I wrote about the four people and the PAC 12 who are facing the most pressure. Um, It was Deion Sanders of Colorado was one of them. Um, Bo Nix at Oregon. Then it was Justin Wilcox, the head coach of Cal. And then it was Alex Grinch at USC. And so um, I'll talk about Coach Prime first because that's what you guys are here for. Um, First of all, I said, is it fair that first-year head coach is on this list? Absolutely not. However, the amount of attention excitement he brings, I feel like everybody's just going to be – it's a good thing that there's there's excitement, but with comes excitement comes expectations. And when people start to expect things, um, I feel like that's when we start getting a little unrealistic. And so – I'm not saying that Colorado won't have a great season next year. I fully expect them to at least win six, five to seven games. Um, that That's good enough to make a bowl game if they win six or seven. That's a great season. But I think some people, especially certain Colorado fans, are putting so much pressure on the team that it's going to like 
move these expectations and kind of when, for example, when Colorado, if they lose, we'll say if they lose a game, um, you already know that people are going to jump on them. Um, and I think the more expectations that we put on them, the more the more we're setting them up for failure. Um, obviously, he brought in the number one transfer class, like I said, televised spring game, six months bets to win it all. Um, but while the championship bets feel far too premature, I think that's because of the hype Sanders has generated, which is perfect because I think you want everybody to believe in you. I just don't know if there's too much pressure on Colorado. Um, but as I say, pressure makes diamonds. Um, I think this team is kind of prepared to be an underdog, and I think they're prepared to have the world against them. And I think that's a great position to be in because they're going to have that mentality of, of us, us against the world. And I think teams that are usually chippy like that are teams that have success. And so while I'm going to grade the pressure on Colorado at like an eight right now um, from fans, um, especially when – I mean, Coach Prime, is he's showing belief in his team too, but he the other day in the Joel Klatt interview, he was like, why can't we win it all right now? Like, why why not us? And so I think that with all this pressure, it's going to get a little bit of tense, um, but we'll, I think Colorado is going to be just fine. I just think that there's going to be some extra added expectations from those around the country, uh, specifically not Colorado fans, who hear all this talk about the program, and then as soon as they struggle, they're going to go – attack Colorado because that's just how we are as a society, societal problems. Um, let's move on. Bo Nix, Oregon. Um, realistically, it comes down to how good he could be without Kenny Dillingham. I think Bo Nix proved that he could be a really good quarterback this past season. Um, accounted for, what was it, like 40 touchdowns? Yeah, literally 40 touchdowns. Um, he could throw. He could run. He's accurate. He could lead the team. Um, Oregon is one of the two teams in the Pac-12. Um, that according to 24 seven sports can actually win the championship based on their blue chip ratio. And I think it all comes down to how good Bo Nix could be. And I just don't know. We've yet to see him play well without Kenny Dillingham calling plays. Obviously they have Will Stein now who very good offensive mind, but in the two, I think it's two years without Kenny Dillingham or three years. No, it's two. I think it's two, maybe th- two or three we'll call it two or three his two or three years without kenny dillingham his numbers take a huge hit but the two years he has with kenny dillingham huge numbers so is he a product of the system or will things click for him um by the way i want to thank you guys for tuning in to locked on bus every day um, i appreciate your comments your support um i want to get these subscriber numbers up so we can get more fans in here um again appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day of locked on bus uh my everyday as you know who you are i appreciate you guys and we'll see you know i like to bring you guys the, the everyday content okay justin wilcox at cal um i think he's one of the coaches in the pac-12 on the hot seat 30 and 36 30 and 36 record um offense is always struggling um he hired jake spavital spav spatival spatable i think is how you say it who is their african Offensive coordinator in 2016 when they led the conference to total offense and they were averaging 37 points per game. Um, they don't have an easy schedule this year, but they need they need something out of Justin Wilcox. I think he's he's bordering he's bordering on that that hot seat area. Um, but again, they just they did fire their basketball coach recently, so who knows if they'll hire bas- fire and hire basketball and football coaches within the same. 10 months or so. Um, and then lastly, I went Alex Grinch, the USC defense coordinator. USC was literally three collapses away. And I say collapses. They were major collapses away from not making the playoff. They literally had Utah on the ropes twice, um, blew both those games. They had two lane on by down by double digits in the cotton bowl and ended up giving up a lead in like two and a half minutes. Um, this USC team, I think, should make the playoff, but if they don't, it'll probably come down to their defense. And I don't know if Alex Grinch is going to have that much longer of a leash um, come 2023 or the 2024 season. Uh, USC fans were already ready to fire him after year one. So people were asking Lincoln Riley, is he the guy? Are we going to keep him? And Lincoln Riley was like, I'm not ready to make a decision yet, but he he's staying around. And so I think Alex Grinch kind of in a prove it mode. Um, he got better talent. They got some big transfer portal additions. Um, they had some leftover guys from last year that were good. So those are my four people in the Pac-12 under the most pressure. Um, I don't. I think Coach Prime being on this list is probably the most unfair, but I think just because of all the attention he brings, there's going to be un- unfair expectations on him and the program. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Um, when we come back, we're going to be talking about 
Colorado's big recruiting weekend this weekend when we come back from the break. Welcome back from the break. We're going to be talking about Colorado's big recruiting weekend this weekend. Um, if you guys didn't know, they hosted, I think it was five or six visitors last week. They landed three of them as commits. This weekend, they're going to be hosting a handful more players, and there's a chance that they could add to their already growing class. Um, so let me run down the list of who's coming. Um, they have 2025 athlete Tylen Johnson. Um, the California native ranks as the number athlete in the country, um, has offers from Arkansas State, Campbell, Charlotte, San Jose State, UNLV. Um, they're going to host 2027 athlete Jelani Culpepper. Um, he's a Texas product, currently unranked because they haven't ranked them that far. Um, he has offers from Texas Tech, Purdue, Michigan State, Nevada, Maryland. Um, then they're hosting 2024 receiver Fatu Mukuba. I believe I'm hopefully saying that right. If not, sorry. From Austin, Texas, um, he holds offers from Tulsa Rice, UTSA, and Kansas State. Uh, 2026 wide receiver Xavier Owens um, from California holds offers from Tennessee, San Diego State, San Jose State, Michigan State. Another guy from Austin, Texas, quarterback Ali Scott, um, 2025 class. UNLV, Northern Alabama, uh, Grand Blaine have all been his first offers. And then... I believe Kylan Fox, the four-star athlete, um, tight end, defense end, can play, can really do it all. Um, the Georgia native, he has, I think it's like 50 to 60 offers. Everybody in the country wants him. He's supposed to visit Colorado on the 16th. So big weekend ahead. Um, realistically, I, I don't want to say that they have to land commits every week. And especially, uh, I think Kylan Fox is the biggest recruit here. Um, I, I would focus a lot of my attention on him if I were you, just because I think while it's cool if a 2025, 2027 recruit commits, they just have so many more. They just have like three, two to three years left of high school. So much could happen. And it's not a bad thing to land them, but you want to focus on Kylan Fox. He's in this 2024 class that I think could use another big boost. Um, they land, let me, let me run down the list right here. Their 2024 class for Colorado. Because that they were in the, I think the nearly the 40s last week, and then after their their big weekend, they had a surge in the rankings. And now the 30th class in the country, um, head by headlined by Aaron Butler, the two-way player. Last week they landed Brandon Davis Swain, the four-star defense lineman. They landed four-star receiver Zy Carl Lewis, uh, and then they landed three-star running back Michael Welch. And so I think there's room for improvement. Obviously, I don't think this class is anywhere close to being done. Obviously, um, but Coach Prime. And everybody, I think, should will be – if you're a Colorado fan and you care about Colorado recruiting, um, go show Kylan Fox some support. Um, he's one of the biggest recruits in the country. Uh, John Garcia, when he was working with us over here at Locked on Bus, interviewed him in at in Athlon, and he was like – he he was the one that called Co Coach Prime the coolest coach in college football. That's like a, a soliloquy or whatever those are called right there. That was a lot of Cs. Um, but he called him the coolest coach in college football, and I think he kind of – while well, he didn't commit at the time, obviously, and he still has it, I think he jump started or helped jump start some of the interest in Coach Prime that he was receiving because Kylan Fox is a big name recruit, and so other recruits kind of were gravitating towards Kylan. And for him to say that, that was big for Colorado. So if you're a fan of the Buffs, make sure you're good over there and support Kylan and look out for him because I don't know, I obviously don't know when he's going to commit, but the fact that Colorado's gone for a visit is a major thing. Um, so go support your Buffs. Um, if I had to guess, put a prediction on how many recruits are going to land this this week, um, I'd probably put it on, I'll say, two to three. Um, I think since there's so many young guys, it's going to be harder to land commits because the young guys, they want to take their time. They don't want to rush into anything, which is totally makes sense. But another big weekend for Colorado recruiting-wise, another big weekend for lock, another big week for Locked on Buffs. Uh, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, of course, I'm Kevin Borba. This has been Locked on Bus. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, follow um, this podcast so that way we can grow our audience, have more great discussions, um, great followings. Um, I'm going to have some great guests coming up, so you guys won't want to miss anything. Again, thank you guys for tuning in to Locked on Buffs. I am Kevin Borba. Um, make sure to follow me over on Athlon as well uh, as I cover Colorado and have everything you need to know about Colorado, the Pac-12. Um, I write a lot about the stuff that I'm not able to talk about here on the episodes, um, here on the podcast, excuse me. So, again, thank you guys for tuning in. 
Have a great Wednesday. Hump date.